Thank you so much for connecting with us today. I appreciate that. And of course, all of our schedules, where we'll be and what we're about is listed on our website. But I also invite you to connect with me on Facebook, on Twitter, or you can email me directly at mark at forwardfitlife.com. Whether you need a Sunday morning speaker as a pulpit supply, a weekend outreach opportunity, or a wellness seminar, I certainly want to help you out and speak with you about that. It's been my pleasure for the last 15 years to teach and also corporate America and also spiritual America, if you will, the principles of 4E as a way to conquer stress and develop wellness. I've taught law enforcement personnel, military personnel, first responders, and corporations all around the world. So I certainly want to talk to you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. Well, welcome to 4E Television. I'm so glad you chose to, to watch today. You're going to be blown away blessed today so you better sit down right now because if you're standing up you may be knocked down because I'm telling you we have an incredible uh, guest today that has is has done more things than that I've even dreamed about it's incredible I can't wait for you to meet her and uh, she has a special um, gifting from the Lord and it's a gifting of encouragement and, you know the thing about encouragement it, it really means to to invoke or infuse courage or infuse power to stimulate something in someone else it sure beats being discouraged that's like pulling something out of somebody we've all been around uh, people who have maybe been discouraged and it tends to be a little bit uh, it, it collects you know it's a little bit contagious discouragement breeds discouragement but encouragement breeds encouragement and we're called to be encouraged there's two types of encouragement I want to talk to you about today one is a special um, uh, gifting of the Lord in the gift of encouragement it's a special ability a special anointing the Holy Spirit empowers someone to do it in a special way provides a platform to do that much like uh, as I had the gift of evangelism you know when I go out and speak and do outreaches it, it doesn't really matter what I say I, I said it before being uh, kind of silly and like I can be sometimes, I could sing Mary Had a Little Lamb and people are still going to get saved every time. And it's, it's God uses the gift that he gives you despite us to please him and to bring glory to him. And there's a gift of encouragement that I'm going to talk about and show you where it is in the word of God. And then there's a general encouragement that we all need. As, as Christian brothers and sisters, we, we encourage one another. And as I said, encouragement breeds encouragement. We, we meet together to encourage one another. So I'm going to read you two passages today. I brought my Bible with me and you know this Bible is worn a little bit but it, it's worn because it gets used and unfortunately these days uh, some don't use their Bible. They trust what's said from a platform and I want to encourage you to use your Bible. Don't let it just gather dust. Let it be a research tool for you because it's more than that. It's the living breathing Word of God. You wonder what God thinks about something? Just ask him. This word is applicable to yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It is a living word, and it's alive. This is God. This is what he thinks. This is who he is. This is not just a book. It's not just the number one selling book of all time. We're going to talk a lot about books today, and this is not a book. This is a word. And so I'm going to read you two passages today. The first one is, is found in the book of Romans. And I like the book of Romans because it's a really honest and, and open book. And I'm going to read you just uh, six verses from the book of Romans in chapter 12, specifically talking about the gifts that God gives us, beginning in chapter 12, verse 3. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Notice it's about grace and, and we get things by grace, not because we earn it, not because we deserve it, not because we pay for it, because of God's free, unmerited favor, his grace upon our lives. Just as each of you has one body with many members, this is how we work together now. I want you to catch this. It's, I've said it before, somebody's got to be the big toe. I don't mind being a big toe because that stabilizes the whole body. Whatever purpose and role you have, fulfill that. 
And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts. According to the grace, that word grace again, given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion of his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. Get ready. Underline this one. If it's encouraging, let him or her encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, mercy, let him do so cheerfully. Now, as we can see, there's different gifts. Does that mean you have them all? No, not necessarily. You could, I guess you could have if God's grace said so. You could have one, two, three. But no matter, you have a role that's significant to play. It's like this whole body. If one part lets down, the other parts are going to suffer. It gets imbalanced, and we begin to overcompensate, and we have problems. I understand that from a physical point of view, a physical training point of view. Now, that is a specific gifting. There's also a general encouragement that we are told to do to each other on a daily basis. It's found in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, and one verse, simply one verse, says it all. You say, why do I go to church? I don't like going to church. I, you know, church is not about a building, all right? Church is about people. The church is people. You can have church in a Starbucks if you want to. You really can't. But here is what the Word of God says in Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not, when say not, not, you're like not. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But let us, that word again, encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Encouragement's key. I love to be encouraged. I don't like to be discouraged. Encouragement gives me strength. It gives me power. It gives me purpose. It's awesome. I love it. There is a person here with me. Her name is Carol Ladd. And Carol, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so, so grateful. Glad. Oh, I'm so thrilled to be with you today. Thank you. I can see, and I know everybody can see, <laughs> she has this incredible joy and glow. The, the gift of encouragement, not just the general encouragement, the gift of encouragement is here. You can see the gift. It, it's a gift. I know she gives glory to God um, mm -hmm. as that gift manifests itself. But Carol, before you tell all of what God has been able to accomplish through you, and it's, it's a lot. We could probably do five programs on it. <laughs> I, I want them to know the person of Carol Ladd. Who are you? Where did you come from? And how did you begin? What was your initial introduction to the Lord? Well, I, actually, when I was a little girl, I was a good little girl now. I want you to know, I was a good little girl, and I would always go to church. Be and, careful, people yeah, are watching. I know, yeah. I know, but I promise you, they can uh, verify this. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and I would always do, you know, the right thing, always trying to please my parents mm. and please my teachers. Went to church and, and learned about Jesus and, and thought that he, I liked him. I, yeah. I, I, I really liked him. Pretty but good I, guy. He was, yeah. I really liked his birthday. You yeah, know? nice, yeah. <laughs> and that day he rose from the dead. You know, <laughs> I was really thrilled about that. And I, um, I, it wasn't until actually I moved uh, to Dallas. I came uh, as a young girl. Our family, we moved to Dallas. And we visited a church and went to this church. And afterwards, somebody came to our home to visit us. And I will never forget the day because a uh, knock on the door, and I remember we were all home, so we um, asked this woman to come into our home, and uh, she sat down in the living room, and I, uh, you know, we all lined up and sat in our nice little chairs in the living room, and she began to talk to us about the Lord. She began to tell us that uh, Jesus was more than just this picture that we see on the wall on Sundays, mm -hmm. that he came for a purpose. And she started off by telling us that, that God loves us, but that the world, that each of us are sinners, each one of us are sinners. But because he loves us, he sent his son to die for us. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I really understood why he came to this earth. Wow. And as a nine-year-old girl, it all of a sudden clicked with me. And uh, so she uh, told us that he, the reason why he rose from the dead, giving us promise of eternal life. And it was that very day that I got down on my knees and asked Jesus to come into my life and uh, to be a part of my life. And I began to understand that it was a relationship. It wasn't just this 
great guy that I knew about, he became very real to me, mm -hmm. and he became a part of my life. And so I, I know he began a work in me early on because I had such a desire to know more about him. So I began reading the Bible and studying the Bible, memorizing the Bible, and I, I, I really grew. He continued to work in my life yeah. and grew me up in him. And uh, so now, actually, I, I would say one of my favorite verses, a, a verse that I feel like he gave me is my signature verse. Mm -hmm. uh, the verse that, that is my life verse is let your light so shine among mm. men that they may see your good works and honor the Father. Mm. So I feel like in everything I do, I want to point to him and give him glory, but also help others and encourage others to know him. Well, the first time I, I, I met you, you know, in person was right before the program. And I immediately felt uh, in sense encouragement <laughs> and, and I knew in preparation for this show, my prayers uh, and the, what the Lord gave me, the word encouragement, kept coming up. And, and I think it's so awesome that you said, you know, Jesus is not just some good dude I know about, a pretty good guy. Um, he's more than that. Right. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be not just our Savior, but he wants to be our friend. And we want to commune with him through the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and if we do that, then, then that light that's within us shines out yeah. and people see that. Yes. And, and that is so cool. Now, you have a special gifting of encouragement. You recognize that, right? Yes, you, I do. You yes. own that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it's, it's, it's given to you by grace from God. It's not because you earned it. Now, you use that gift for him now. How do you do it? You, you help and encourage women specifically. Exactly. How do you do that? And why, why, why women? Yes, well, I, I, that's just the audience that I, I feel like the Lord has led me to specifically. And I love to give wor words of strength. And that's what you mentioned earlier. Encouragement really is giving strength. The root word cur actually comes from the, the Latin word heart, to encourage wow. the heart. So I love strengthening the hearts of others. Mm -hmm. But I realize that true encouragement comes from God himself. Mm. He is the true encourager because ultimately he is encouraging our hearts. He's changed our hearts. He's transformed yeah. us and he's made a difference in our lives. And he asks us to love him with all of our heart. And then we are to love others as well. And so yeah. I, I feel like it's an important aspect of encouragement is mm. to encourage people to love the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, to encourage them to walk in his ways and to find their strength in Him mm. and Him alone. And if you're, if you're wondering, that scripture is Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all, everything you've got. It, is, it starts off with the inside. When God changes your, your heart, your heart, it's in the heart. That's where the real change occurs. Yes. So, so you specifically encourage and strengthen women across yes. the country. Yes. And how do you go about doing that? Well, I teach uh, several Bible studies, actually, mm. and they're called Positive Woman Connections. I can't imagine it, why. I know. Yeah. Shocker. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much fun because it offers an opportunity for women to come and engage with one another. It's a once a month mm. lunchtime Bible study. So working women can come to it, and it's, it offers an opportunity for women to engage with each other, but more importantly, to engage with God's Word. Yeah. So uh, I, I love to teach the Positive Woman Connection Bible study, and that that's also the beauty of that title is it's very inviting. Mm. Women want to come to something where they know they're going to be encouraged in a positive way, yeah. and and we know that that encouragement comes from His Word. Mm. So um, that's I, I do love that. I also do write books, and yeah. uh, I I enjoy encouraging. I saw that <laughs> you have like is it is it like seven hundred or eight hundred books? Oh. I don't know. Oh, I've lost count. Yeah. It's something more like 30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, 30 is incredible. And I will tell you, um, you know, Carol here is, is a lady. You know, I have actually been in the bookstore and saw this name, Lad, <laughs> you know, the truth. And she has books that you've probably seen them in. And this is her. She's here. And, uh, Carol, I, I'm so, so honored to get to know you. Now, you've written 30 books. How does one go about writing 30 books, much uh, less three, well, much less one? What, <laughs> what started you on this quest to communicate God's love through 
through your books. Well, it's actually a little bit odd the way I started because uh, formerly I was a math teacher, and math teachers don't typically write books. No. But that just encourages you to show you that God can do anything with our lives. He can uh, take us on all sorts of unexpected journeys. And uh, as a math teacher, I uh, enjoyed doing lots of fun and creative things in my classroom. Well, when I stopped teaching and, and started uh, doing my kids' birthday parties, I know this sounds odd, but as I was doing their birthday parties, I started doing creative, fun things. Some of my teacher ideas, but just some creative things in, in the birthday parties. And every time somebody would leave one of the birthday parties, they'd say, Carol, this, this is great. You ought to write a book. Wow. And I thought in my mind, oh, no, math, math teachers don't write yeah. books, no. And, no. Uh, and yet, uh, after I heard that so many times, one day I was walking through the library and saw a flyer for a writer's conference, and I thought, I've got to go to this writer's conference. I was compelled to go to it. And I, I went home, asked my husband, will you watch the kids while I go to this writer's conference? And he said yes. And I thought, that was, that, that, that was a, a, a good point right there, I think, that, I, that I'm supposed to go. You know? Did he have <laughs> so, any idea that, that you no. had this? So you were probably catching him off guard, right. like, what? Why? Yeah, why are you doing that? But, but he, he, he said, do it, do it, if, that, if you want to give that a try. And so went to this writer's conference, learned how to propose a book. And when I came home, this proposal, this idea for a book, of Parties with a Purpose, just flooded out of me. And what it was was an idea for a party book, but it teaches biblical values in mm. the party themes. So I sent it off to publishers. I was rejected a couple of times. They always said, expect rejection. So I was rejected a couple of times. But then, by God's grace, a publisher took my first book, wow. Parties with a Purpose. So then I began speaking to mom's groups on how to do creative children's parties, you know, just encouraging them how to make it fun for their kids. And the, the places where I would go speak at these mom's groups, they would ask me, Carol, will you come back next year and speak on another topic? Wow. I don't have any other topics, you know, so I had you to really start. You thought you didn't have Yeah, topics. right. So I began praying, and the Lord began giving me new topics, and lo and behold, a lot of those topics became new books. And uh, at one point, uh, I began noticing that the moms I, I spoke to needed encouragement. Mm -hmm. They needed mm -hmm. a boost because they felt so negative in their homes. They felt negative about themselves. So I began praying through a title of a book called The Power of a Positive Mom. And I started speaking on that topic and oh, women were eating it up. They yeah. loved the topic. So I proposed it to some, one of my publishers. Well, they rejected the, the book. So I, I, I proposed it nine more times. Nine rejections. This is book two. The, this the, this, no, this is actually about book nine. Okay. Book nine in my repertoire of books. Yeah. And uh, so um, I, I, I was rejected over and over. Finally, a publisher, a, a rather medium-sized publisher at the time named Howard Books, decided to take my book. They literally called me up and said, we don't know who you are. But we found your book under a stack of proposals, and we thought you might have a good idea here. So we think we'll publish you. It was you kind didn't of like that. a no. It was kind of like a lo low hurrah, you know. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. not too exciting, okay. but all yes, right. Yes, yes. But they took this book, and they did a great job. They did a great job with the cover. They got it out there into all the bookstores. Within a month of that book being out there on the bookshelves. They called me back up, Howard called me up, and they said, Carol, congratulations, your book is a bestseller. No way. And it had become a Christian be uh, bestseller wow. in the Christian marketplace. It started ending up everywhere, on, in front of bookstores everywhere. And I began to realize, oh my, this is a whole new field. I thought <laughs> I was the party lady, but I think I'm the positive lady. And uh, so Howard asked me to begin writing other books along those lines, The Power of Positive Wife and Friend and Teen mm. and uh, Woman. So I began writing all these books, and uh, lo and behold, uh, they became uh, known, at, and I became known as the positive lady. Yeah. Uh, then Howard was bought by a little-known company called Simon and Schuster. <laughs> uh, the Pimsleur people. Yes, yeah, yes. I know so, that. Yeah. Yes, and so Simon and Schuster. Then how wonderful! Then, then the books went worldwide, all over the world, translated in all sorts of different languages, oh, wow. all, all, all over in all the bookstores. So I, I'm thankful that the Lord took this little math teacher oh. and brought her from Parties with a Purpose to all these positive books, and now I continue to run 
write books on, books based on uh, books of the Bible, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a, a different wonderful publishers, and uh, just just love love writing. I am so so blown away by this because, you know, I think uh, people inside of them, and you'd probably agree, we are all looking, men or women, but but I think your women uh, concept is great because honestly speaking, in the world these days. Um, moms have, have not been given the recognition and the credit that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, women in general have been used in negative ways. And, and unfortunately, it's created a, an idea of, of um, I guess what I'm trying to say is a confusion of purpose. And, and I can see that even as a man, I can, I can kind of see a confusion of purpose. And, and God has chosen to use you in this time and this season to bring clarity to that. Yes. to bring reality to that. And you're using God's word and God's principles in such a unique way. You brought um, four of your books here. I, I, which one's your newest one? You this were, is my newest one, and this is with Harvest House Publishers, and it's called Positive Life Principles for Women. And what I did in this book is I looked at eight different women in the Bible and looked at their slightly imperfect lives, what their challenges were, and I began looking for what can we learn through their challenges? What, what life principle can we learn to build on that challenge mm. and learn how we can look to God and learn from God uh, to overcome challenges? This is your newest one. Yes. And, and you've got 30, are they... Tell us, uh, I know your website is, is carollad.com. Yes. Um, where can they get the books? Is it on your website and Amazon, et cetera? Absolutely. They, uh, on my website, of course, but uh, also at um, uh, and many of the bookstores have them. And then, of I've course, yeah. Amazon, you know, anywhere yeah. online they can uh, get the books, christianbooksellers.com uh, and all different sorts of places, Barnes & Noble. If you, you said a couple things, uh, and I, I was looking at your bio and research for this particular show, because, you know, you want to know the person you're talking <laughs> with, and I was fascinated. You said a, a thing there in, in your bio. You said your most valued role is that of a wife and mother. I found that so encouraging um, yeah. and, and so, so wonderful because you, you don't see that a lot these days, you know? Exactly, right. and we need to value it because it is a significant role. Oh. We are we are raising, especially as we're, as moms, we're raising the next generation. We are making a difference, and and if if our family life falls apart, then then what are we contributing? Uh, in society, we need to need to build into our family first, so that then they can build into the rest of society. So it's a it's very significant a very significant oh. role in our homes, and that's why I want to encourage moms specifically to build into their kids and help their kids see what they can do, and especially help their kids understand that they find their strength in Christ. Amen. Now, Carol, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to. To look in that camera over here, and and I want you to to talk to two groups, two groups specifically. I want you to give um, the best advice. It may be the same to uh, a, a married mom, uh -huh. um, and then also there's a lot of single moms out there who who may be feeling some sort of uh, desperation or, or can't find the purpose or confusion or where. I want you to look in that camera and, and take a couple minutes just to encourage them and give them what's the best. Um, advice you could give them right now. Okay. Well, as moms, you have a significant role. It is, I believe, one of the highest callings uh, in this earth. And so we want to teach our kids and train them and recognize that we have an opportunity to pour into them. So if you are married, I want to encourage you first to pour into your husband, to love your husband, to build him up, and to build a healthy marriage, to be a strong support to him but also then to help your kids to learn to love well. They're going to learn that by your example. But most importantly, keep your eyes on the Lord. Seek His strength. Because if you want to strengthen others, you first must be strengthened. And that comes by being still and coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, I need you. I can't do this on my own. You know, my biggest fear is when people see the, the book, The Power of a Positive Woman or Mom, that they'll think, ah, oh, it's my power. I want to encourage you that it's God's power. It's God's power at work through you. You may be weak in certain areas. We all are, but he is strong. Seek his strength. 
And for you single moms, I know it's hard. You have a hard role. Remember who your husband is. Your heavenly father is there for you. He is your husband. He is your strength. And when you feel alone, remember that you are not alone. You are not alone in making decisions. You are not alone in, in, in your struggles because the Lord God is with you and he is your help in time of need. So look to him and find your strength and your joy and your hope in him. I'm so thankful you've let me share these words with you. <laughs> that is, has been so encouraging to me and uh, it, it's the, the words you share about encouragement, I mean they, you're, you're targeting women but they apply to everybody. I've been encouraged, and we've got to do this again. This is, this is great. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the thing that I want to, to leave you with today is, is this. Um, we all enjoy being encouraged. We, we enjoy that so much. We crave encouragement. And, and the Bible puts people like, uh, and God puts people like Carol in the world to, to do that. But it's all about us all being encouragers. And I will, I will be direct with you. You can't encourage anybody until you've been filled with courage. And the only way to truly be filled with courage is to be filled with the presence of God. And the only way to do that is to just surrender your life to him. Quit trying your own. Just, just give yourself to him. And if you're sitting out there right now and hearing this broadcast, seeing what's going on, and God's speaking to you, and you don't know him. You know about him, a pretty good guy, but you don't know him. Today is the day that you can know him. And it starts with just acknowledging who he is. Jesus is the son of God who was sent to this earth to die for you. He rose again, and he lives so that we can live in him. And simply by confessing your sin, repenting those ways, asking God to forgive you, and he will forgive you, just, just confessing that Jesus Christ is your Lord, and you believe in your heart, in your heart, in your heart, that thing that gets encouraged, that, that